Hey Shuby Doodlers, how are you doing? Now I often get uh, people leaving comments on this channel um, asking about developing a unique personal distinctive style. I have one this week from Catherine Silliman. She says she's been copying other artists and kind of learning from them, but she doesn't know how to kind of move on uh, to develop that um, unique style. So here are some of my thoughts. <laughs> Now, when you watch X Factor or other reality shows on TV, they always go on about the journey. But that is what you are on. You are on a journey. And think about um, what happened in the old days. A young person would be apprenticed to a master artist. And uh, this was actually a legal document of saying you will, uh, you know, work with them and learn for, you know, seven years or something. And you will work and they will teach. And this was a legal document. And you'd start off making the tea, cleaning paintbrushes and things. But if you were you really wanted to be an artist, you would watch all the time. You'd be learning, learning, learning. And the master would have a little group of pupils, apprentices, and he would know which one was the potential and would give most of their attention to them. The others, they were going to be artists, you know, and eventually they would maybe kind of stay on with the studio and become assistants and and the, 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 the master would kind of sketch something out. They would fill in the background and the master would then sort of finish off the, the final details. At the end of seven years, one of them, though, would be driven and want to do more than that. And they would then become what was known as a journeyman and they would literally go on a journey from one job to another, uh, here and there. Um, if they were lucky, they would sort of go to different countries, they would go to different courts. If they were really lucky, they would go to grand houses and palaces and there they would see all the great art f from before and they would learn from that while they were producing new work um, at the time. So, so it's this continuing building, building, building thing. You do your apprenticeship, then you go on your journey as a journeyman or a journey woman. And uh, that's where you really start building. Now, the great scientist Sir Isaac Newton, <laughs> he said it, he was a genius, but he said, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. And that's exactly what we do. There is this great history of art uh, onto which you add your tiny little bit. And the, that old master that had a pupil, they had been taught by a master who had been taught by a master, who had been taught by a master, who had all been on their own journeys, who had learned and learned and learned. And this great sort of pile of information and knowledge sort of all came together and got passed on. Now, you don't need to do that anymore because you've got YouTube, you've got all these people teaching you, you've got the TV teaching you, you've got books, you've got libraries, you've got so much information that that uh, apprentice in the old days just didn't have access to. They had to learn from their master, they had to go on that journey. Your journey now is it's just, just to keep doing that, just to keep looking and keep learning, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. And uh, you've got to kind of look at how other people do things, but you've then got to do your own thing as well. So so if you, you, you've got to have a kind of a passion and a, a need to express something. I think that, that there are kind of two kinds of artists. There is kind of a decorative artist who, um, who are kind of more involved in design and, and making things kind of pretty. There are other artists who, who are kind of expressive artists and they've kind of got something to say. And if you're a design kind of artist, then look at how other people work and just, you've got to be intelligent. Um, you, you haven't got to be super brainy or anything, but you've got to be intelligent and think, this is what I want to do. And you keep improving and building and building and building. If you want to be an, an expressive kind of artist, then you've got to have something to express. You've got to believe in something. You've got to have a vision. You've got to want to say something uh, about the world. Um, uh, and, and that's what all the great artists have. Now, in the old days, most a lot of artists were basically cameras and they were producing portraits for, for people. And, but now 
Um, but but since the camera came in, you don't need to do that anymore. And expression became much more. In the old days, uh, a lot of people they were painting for the glory of God, and, and uh, which they believed in intensely. Um, but now. People paint for all sorts of reasons. They paint for the glory of colour, they paint for the glory of the shape, nature, all sorts of things. Um, so you've got to need to know who you are and what it is you're trying to say. You need to understand your materials. I think if you just keep trying all sorts of different materials, um, you're never going to become a master. I, I think eventually you have to say, this is me, this is what I like, this is what I'm good at. And you get to know how to use a pencil or how to paint watercolour, how to do your particular thing and you keep working at that, kind of keep narrow down a bit because otherwise you're not going to make a unique distinctive style, you're going to be all over the place. Choose, this is me, this is what I'm going to do and focus. Um, be a bit of a marketer. All those greats like Picasso and people, they did they were marketers, they knew what people liked and they produced work that people would buy. Um, so if you want to make a living at it, if you want people to appreciate what you do, you need to do what people like. Uh, so many people say, this is me, this is my art, and they produce something that nobody actually likes. And then they get very frustrated <laughs> and start railing against the world who don't understand them. And that is the this kind of image that we have of the tortured artist. You don't need to be like that. Just say, this is this is me, this is my message, this is what I'm saying. This is These are the materials that I like using, this is the vision that I have, and stick to it and keep going and keep going. And your individual style will then start to develop. But you've got to work at it, you've got to stick at it. Um, you need also to kind of get out, find supporters and people who are going to help push you uh, as an artist and, and, and push your name as an artist, people who are going to buy your work and enable you to survive. Um, it, it's a whole muddle of things and Along the way, there are lots and lots and lots of little hurdles, and most of the hurdles are actually in your head, and you've got to keep jumping and jumping and jumping. And all the way along the journey, people fall off their horses, they fall by the wayside, all, all along the way. And eventually, one or two people survive at the end. And I can assure you, those great artists that survive, who everybody bows down to and thinks you are wonderful, they are thinking, hmm, I haven't got there yet, oh, I just haven't quite got it right yet. And they are full of doubt and they keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Doubt is part of the whole thing. Part of it is doubt, but that doubt should push you to keep being inspired, to keep moving forward, to keep practicing, honing your skills, honing your ideas, honing, understanding what it is you believe in, what it is you want to say. And most importantly, making what it is you want to say accessible to other people who are your market, who are the people who are going to buy, who are going to allow you to stay in business long enough to get to where it is you want to go. It's a kind of catch-22 vicious circle. So good luck, stick with it, keep working at it, and you will eventually get there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, uh, click that link and go see more Advice for Artists videos. I've got a whole playlist or just go and have a look at the mystery drawing. <laughs> Either way, make sure you have click that logo and subscribe on YouTube for lots more drawing videos and advice. And if you're getting serious about it, why not come over to Patreon and join my art school? Only $3 a month. That's absolutely nothing from what I'm providing on there. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.